A small girl gave a sign with her hand that completely transformed the deaf cleaner's life. She had a suspicion that the girl was in trouble, but she could never have realized the severity of the situation. At the bus station, the morning was calm and the sun was shining gently. It was peaceful and serene, even with the typical commotion of people coming and going, before boarding. Some travelers grabbed a coffee while others carried bulky baggage. One of the cleaners, Maria, showed up at the station ready for yet another hard work day. Despite having been deaf from birth, she was used to the routine and overcame obstacles with courage and resolve. The woman was acutely aware of her surroundings and highly perceptive. Maria greeted a co-worker she saw as she came into the office. They had a brief sign language conversation before starting their jobs. Despite the fact that not many people could converse with her, they tried. Maria, a committed 41 years old cleaner, tackled her profession with tenacity and dedication. Even though she couldn't hear others, she was one of the greatest workers at the station despite her disability. She was familiar with the hectic pace of the station and, even without listening in on passenger discussions, could predict which sections needed immediate cleaning. She was often able to tell by someone's movements and facial expressions whether they wanted information or assistance. Her charisma and discipline won her praise from her co-workers. Maria was able to express herself clearly with gestures, nods, and sign language, even to others who were not familiar with her mode of communication. She was not, however, given the same attention and consideration by everyone at the bus station. Due to her disabilities, some passengers disregarded or undervalued her, which presented a continual difficulty for Maria. She was unfazed by these setbacks since she thought her work mattered and that she could, even in tiny ways, improve people's lives. Nobody could have imagined that, on this very day, things would go according to plan, and that Maria's bravery would shortly change her life forever. As she was dusting the windows, wiping the floor, and cleaning, she spotted something out of the ordinary. A small girl with a scared look was with a couple. The woman appeared serious and was clothed in black apparel. While the man was tall, powerful, and had a frown on his face, keeping the girl firmly between them, they rushed onward. Maria could tell something wasn't right about the way the three were interacting even if she couldn't hear. The pair seemed tense, and the small daughter seemed uncomfortable. Maria felt that something was wrong and she should be on guard, so she watched them warily while she carried on cleaning. The bus station in the vibrant metropolis of New York was brimming with activity from passengers arriving and departing, the small girl was sitting nervously and silently next to the couple, who had bought tickets for a far-off place, and they were waiting for their bus on a bench. An employee of the bus terminal named Joseph went around asking passengers whether they needed help or had any questions concerning their boarding platform. He approached the pair and greeted them after assisting a couple of other passengers, Good afternoon, hello. Which bus are you awaiting? inquired the man. It is not relevant to you, you're free to go, the woman angrily said. The young man attempted to maintain his composure despite being shocked by her severe reply. I apologize, ma'am, all I want to do is help. Do you have the appropriate platform? We are, indeed. The man glared at him and stated, we don't need help. Still attempting to be helpful, Joseph turned to face the young child and said, and you, sweetheart. What's your name? Do you accompany them? The mother said icily. Her name is Laura, and yes, she's with us. Before the girl could reply, after our vacation, we, her aunt and uncle, are taking her home. Now please cease troubling us. Joseph chose to go on and help other passengers after being slightly stunned by the couple's behavior. He didn't mean to stir things up. But he felt uneasy about the exchange, seeing the couple's gestures and their talk. Maria hurriedly pulled Joseph aside, they corresponded through a notepad, on which Maria scribbled her inquiries and Joseph answered them, what did you say to that couple, they appear peculiar, wrote Maria, yes, they were very rude and ill-mannered, Joseph retorted, they showed no interest in my attempts to assist them, Laura is the name of the girl, Maria thanked Joseph and proceeded about her cleaning. Keeping an eye on the couple and the young child from a distance, she had a gut feeling that something wasn't right, and she was worried about it. Maria was not aware that her misgivings were validated. The little girl in question, Laura, was the daughter of affluent New York City businessman Max, who operated a sizable chain of home appliance stores. Laura was a lovely, perceptive, 
bright blonde girl with large blue eyes and bright blonde hair when she was just nine years old. She was modest and kind despite coming from a wealthy family, frequently taking part in events her family hosted to benefit the underprivileged. Laura was waiting for her private chauffeur at her language school on a lovely Saturday when a couple who appeared to be lost approached her. Hello, little flower. How are you? They yelled at her. Are you able to assist us? We're a little lost and we're not from the city. Do you know the location of this street? They pulled out a cell phone map to show her. Laura jumped up and hurried to the car to look at the map, eager to help. At that point, the couple took advantage of the situation, throwing open the car door and dragging Laura inside. She begged them to let her go, sobbing and screaming in fear. However, the couple disregarded her requests and took off across the city. The pair belonged to a gang that trafficked children in the New York City region. This gang was made up of dangerous, well-organized criminals from all around the nation. Their aim was to kidnap powerful and affluent kids and demand huge ransoms from their families. They would use brutal and violent methods to do this, to avoid being discovered by the authorities. They frequently took to hiding in remote areas and wearing disguises. The two individuals in question were vicious lawbreakers. The man, Evan was an ex-convict with a terrible criminal past that included drug trafficking and bank robberies, Rachel. His spouse was his collaborator. They were in charge of snatching the kids and keeping them hostage until the ransom was paid, even with their experience. They took great care to plan out every aspect of their business, to frighten their victims. They took on various disguises and assumed fictitious identities, and they utilized guns and other dangerous tools to avoid drawing undue attention. They opted to go by bus instead of using airports or airplanes. Using a combination of deceit and empty promises of freedom in return for financial support from their parents, Evan and Rachel expertly manipulated children into believing them, making their abduction look easy. They understood just how to approach their targets, returning to the bustling bus station, where people were coming and going. Laura sought an opportunity to flee from the menacing duo. It was clear she needed to take swift action but she had no idea Maria was watching. Laura recognized an opportunity when she spotted a restroom just a few meters away. Her request was simple, please, would it be possible for me to use the restroom? Rachel glanced at Laura with suspicion as she appeared to consider the suggestion, as if he were worried about something. Evan kept his eyes peeled around him, all right, but Rachel will be accompanying you. Evan pointed out, Laura was hesitant, but she knew this was her best shot, with Rachel following closely behind, she went to the restroom after agreeing. Laura thought of a way to eliminate Rachel as they drew closer to the door. She made it seem like she tripped and lost her tiara. Rachel knelt down to get it after a long, frustrated sigh, attempting to sprint towards the bus station's exit. Laura seized the fleeting opportunity for diversion, but as Rachel saw Laura's true motive, she seized her arm and yanked her back. I take it you believe you're a genius, she spoke with a fiery tone, expressing her frustration, Laura felt an excruciating agony, but she restrained herself from screaming for fear of further aggravating her situation. As Rachel hauled Laura back to the bench, she shot Laura a menacing look, Evan waited there, Evan wanted to know, what happened, for his part, can you believe it? Rachel responded, continuing, the girl tried to run away. Nevertheless. I managed to apprehend her, her expression was one of sarcasm as she glared at Laura, evidently angry, Evan pursed his lips and snorted, with tears welling up in her eyes and her desperation mounting, Laura couldn't figure out how to break free of the nightmare, Maria, whose worries for the girl were already high, watched the whole thing unfold with a heavy heart, although she lacked complete knowledge of the situation. A strong sense of intuition told her that something was very wrong. With the clock ticking down to the bus's departure, Laura knew she had only two hours to figure out how to ask for assistance. The maid kept on with her duties, but she kept a close watch on the girl. A bunch of kids on an outing raced, laughing and playing, passed the bus terminal at one point. The young girl dropped a tiny toy she was clutching after one of the kids brushed up against her, an heirloom from her mother. The plastic doll was old and chipped with faded colors, even though the small girl sprinted after the toy, Rachel managed to get it first, her attitude was one of contempt as she picked it up and tossed it into a neighboring garbage bin, it will no longer be necessary for you, 
now, sit down and act properly, she commanded fiercely, Laura nodded and silently went back to sit next to the pair, her eyes welling up with tears. Having seen what had happened, the cleaner felt a twinge of sympathy. The girl was obviously in pain and in need of assistance, while Maria thought of a method to help the child without endangering herself further, she slowly approached them, acting as if she were cleaning the area around. For the first time, Laura saw Maria coming and had an odd feeling of relief, as if she could feel that Maria could lend a hand, to avoid coming out as suspicious. Maria avoided making eye contact with the girl and instead maintained an impartial and businesslike posture. After picking up the trash can from where Rachel had dropped the doll, she discreetly placed the toy in her pocket, ensuring that the trafficker was oblivious, after realizing the cleaner had seen everything, Laura's hope grew, could this lady provide me a hand, Laura was perplexed, after Maria noticed the little girl's hopeful expression, she chose to approach the pair, attempting to decipher the issue through lip reading, she meticulously cleaned the floor in front of and beneath the bench. But the crooks were irritated by her presence and her conduct, listen, you can't miss us over here, tell me again, out of here, they shouted, Maria used the chance to come clean about her deafness while keeping her cool, she apologized, but she was deaf, and she used signs to show that she couldn't hear them, your voice is muted, the two traffickers remained silent, their expressions betraying their amazement and confusion, to make room for her to clean under the bench. They just elevated their feet and watched as she went on with her task, realizing the cleaner was deaf and used sign language to communicate bright in Laura's eyes, she was in a pretty bad spot, but this finding gave her hope, if the girl could only get Maria's assistance, she might be able to flee the traffickers and save herself from an awful destiny, in order to avoid coming across as suspicious, Laura started watching Maria intently. Laura managed to stay strong despite the overwhelming strain because she had faith that Maria could rescue her. Maria, worried about Laura's safety, snuck a peek at her when the robbers were momentarily preoccupied. Laura grabbed the chance, even if it was a hazardous move, her bravery shining through, she quietly signed, Help, I'm being kidnapped. Maria was taken aback by Laura's sign language abilities and the seriousness of the message, her eyes widened in disbelief. Her pulse was pounding, and she was aware that she had to do something swift to save the girl, Joseph, an employee at the bus station, had already volunteered to lend her a hand if necessary, so that was a relief. In a time-sensitive text message, Maria pleaded with him to contact security and the authorities without delay, shocked and worried. Joseph called the police right away. Maria told Laura that the cops were approaching while she waited for them to arrive. For the first time, Laura grinned in relief and felt at rest. Maria made an effort to maintain her composure and go on working, blending in with the other staff members who knew about the circumstance. Laura tried not to show any signs of anxiousness or anxiety because she knew that it might all come crashing down. Both Maria and Laura were feeling the minutes drag at the bus terminal. There was an obvious sense of anxiety in the air. The security guards and police officers finally showed up. The cops made a careful approach to the offenders in an effort to avoid drawing suspicion. Good afternoon, an undercover agent uttered. Would you kindly present your IDs to us? We're carrying out a standard inspection. The pair gave their passports over after hesitating and displaying apprehension. To buy some time while the rescue squad got ready to jump in, the cops went through the IDs and pretended everything was in order. The rescue squad unexpectedly showed up at the bus terminal, encircling the offenders and keeping them from getting away. Laura went to Maria, relieved and scared at the same time. Maria held Laura and consoled her till the small girl started crying. The bus stop was once again peaceful after Laura was found safe and the traffickers were captured, but the little girl's and Maria's life had been permanently altered. The city was soon filled with tales of the spectacular rescue. And Maria was hailed as a hero, Laura's father, Max, was incredibly appreciative of everything Maria had done for his daughter, he made the decision to provide her a substantial payment as well as an offer to work as a housekeeper at the family mansion, where she would have better working and living conditions, Maria enthusiastically accepted the offer, pleased to have the chance to be near to Laura and make a difference in her life. Maria was curious as to how the young child knew sign language. 
Laura gave the explanation that she had picked it up from her adopted older deaf brother, the traffickers never imagined that it would be a deaf cleaning lady who would put an end to their schemes, the narrative made clear that even in the worst of circumstances, language, spoken or sign language, has the ability to bring people together. It emphasized how crucial it is to make deaf people feel included and accessible in order to build a more equitable and just society. Their narrative encouraged others to embrace diversity, acknowledge the positive impact that removing obstacles to communication and valuing empathy can have on people's lives, and establish new connections and experiences. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story, tragically. Colin's parents had no idea that their son would die as a result of the challenges and difficulties that accompanied his birth, a miracle, unbelievable incident took place when Jude, Colin's father, begged the priest to baptize his kid, who had died. Jude and Sandra had been friends for a long time before they chose to date and then be married. Many people respected their closeness and the strength of their love for one another. They became a model of what can happen when two individuals put aside their differences and learn to love and understand one another. The newlyweds were overjoyed to begin a family after their marriage because they had a deep passion for children. Sandra wanted a young girl to spoil and clothe in matching outfits, while Jude wanted a newborn boy to bring to baseball games. They had no idea that their unborn child would cause them so much anguish and terror when they were pregnant. Sandra and Jude were elated when, one year after their wedding, Sandra found out she was expecting, they were looking forward to finding out the gender of their unborn child at their scheduled scan session, they had a little wager going. Sandra would put more boyish things in the nursery if it was a boy, and Jude would have to decorate it with pink things if it was a girl. They had no idea that the truth they were about to discover would rock their entire universe, after that. Sandra went through a battery of exams and diagnostic procedures, such as a thoracic ultrasound, blood work, and scans, the time had come to find out the gender of the baby. Sitting nervously in clutching hands, the pair entered the doctor's office, the doctor told Jude. It's a boy, and Jude couldn't have been happier. He pumped his fist in celebration, and Sandra pouted at first, then laughed at her husband's elation. In that instant, her desire for a daughter diminished. And she started to eagerly anticipate the birth of her son. Their joy was abruptly halted, though, when they beheld the doctor's face contort into a grimace, is something wrong, doctor, with a rushing heart and hammering blood in his ears. Jude asked, the abrupt change in the doctor's attitude worried Sandra as much as anybody else. The doctor informed them of a problem found by the transvaginal ultrasound and blood testing. And he groaned, preeclampsia. Characterized by dangerously high blood pressure, is a pregnancy problem that Sandra had. It might put both mother and baby in significant danger. Thankfully, Sandra's illness was not life-threatening, so the doctor gave her the medicine she needed to control it. He assured them he would try his best to assist them, but he cautioned that Sandra could develop eclampsia, which could cause seizures and coma. This news depressed the pair. Their initial foray into parenthood had not gone according to plan, their confidence in the pregnancy's normal progression had been shattered only weeks before, everything, though, appeared to be a faraway mirage at this point. Unfalteringly, Jude was there for his pregnant wife. Their anticipation of the arrival of their kid skyrocketed as the due date drew near. Sandra unexpectedly went into labor one month prior to her due date and underwent an emergency C-section. Despite the lengthy and intricate procedure, their baby boy was delivered without incident. Despite all the odds, he was a healthy, lovely baby. Upon first sight, the couple was head over heels for their newborn baby. It was only the beginning, they didn't realize. They assumed the worst part was behind them. Concerning symptoms began to manifest for Colin's parents a short time after he was born. The infant would fuss a lot, or not at all, and sometimes he or she would choke on a breast. Similarly, he started to have trouble breathing as he slept, worried about their son's well-being. They rushed him to the doctor, who diagnosed him with a routine cold. After consulting with three different medical facilities, no one could pinpoint the source of the issue. Despite extensive testing, one morning at the hospital, Sandra broke down in tears due to the constant reassurances that nothing was wrong. I can feel something is amiss with my little one, I beg you, spare my child's life. 
As Jude attempted to reassure her and lead her out of the doctor's office, she yelled out, My baby is sick, and you can't even see it, her voice broke. Afterwards that week, Gloria, Jude's mom, dropped by to talk about baptism Colin. In the beginning, she had refrained from mentioning it so Sandra could get over the challenging pregnancy, we can arrange for his baptism, but it would be inappropriate at this time. Jude declared, first and foremost, we wish to attend to our son's health. We can put off the baptism till he's of legal age to decide for himself, nevertheless, Gloria was adamant, she thought that by christening Colin, any hidden disease that the physicians might have overlooked could be cured, a miracle recovery, she believed, was possible with enough faith, with the intention of seeking the best medical treatment for their kid afterwards. The couple consented to the baptism to placate the elderly mother. Seeing no harm in attempting, they got stuck in a huge traffic jam on the way to church that Sunday, something horrifying happened when they were unexpectedly delayed from their customary five-minute drive to the church, taking them almost twenty minutes due to traffic, little Colin's face became blue as he started to choke and cough frantically, his parents made desperate attempts, but to no avail, to lessen his agony, Colin struggled to breathe for a few minutes before giving up completely. Panicked, Sandra started shouting for someone to dial 911, they were lucky that there was a doctor in the car next to theirs, even though the ambulance would take a while to arrive due to traffic, despite the doctor's best efforts, infant Colin stayed motionless and unresponsive despite chest compressions, baby, you can do this, fight, daddy needs you, Colin, as the doctor began CPR, Jude yelled in a desperation that did not abate. The doctor checked Colin's pulse after a few more minutes and then exclaimed, he's gone, when Jude heard what the doctor had to say, his eyes grew wide with fear, no, 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 he can't be dead, Jude yelled, a desperate note in his voice, his mother's remarks about being baptized suddenly came back to him, strengthening his resolve, he was not going to give up without a fight, he had to be able to do something, Jude did not hesitate to act upon seeing the church spire in the distance. After removing the infant from his wife's arms, he ran in the direction of the church, he hurried to the chancel after entering, holding his dead kid close to his bosom, the sudden appearance of the unkempt and anxious stranger shocked the priest, who was pacing around the altar and praying silently, at the altar, Jude went down on his knees, telling the priest the whole tale in a hurry and begging that his son be baptized, he pleaded, I don't want to lose my only son, through sobs. Understandably, the priest hesitated, as tiny Colin was already dead, Jude, on the other hand, implored, you're a priest, and would not accept no, you must think that miracles happen, please combine your faith with mine, and together we can revive my kid, I think that baptism is important, the priest's compassion was sparked by Jude's obvious despair, and he consented to baptize the dead infant, the priest made the required arrangements while muttering under his breath prayers. While Jude clasped his hands in prayer, calling out to God, amazing things happened when the priest dipped the cold, rigid baby into the water, Jude heard the loudest wail, one that seemed to emanate from the depths of existence itself, as the priest raised little Colin out of the water, Colin was crying and had his eyes wide open, Colin had returned to life, and it was nothing short of a miracle, Sandra arrived shortly after and was astounded by what she saw. She cried tears of thanksgiving to God while holding her wet baby close, Jude was amazed at the how his deed of faith had made the impossibly possible, the priest's contribution to this amazing occurrence was greatly appreciated by them, Colin has had outstanding health ever since that day, at 16 years old, he has never had to go back to the hospital, it's a really inspiring tale of blessings and faith. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comment section, if you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel, that all about today's stories, see you next time.